Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. And today I'm joined by Gary Bratt, who is in North Carolina. How are you doing, Gary? I am doing just fine, John. How about yourself? Excellent, excellent. And Gary is a business motivational speaker, personal development coach, entrepreneur, father, business owner, and clinical psychologist, which is something that really fascinates me, that uh, that whole area. And, and Gary went through some life-changing uh, events uh, a while back, you know, when his um, child had a life-threatening uh, condition. And this really helped Gary to develop his con his concepts and his philosophy on change. Because mm -hmm. obviously, Gary, going back to that incident, that was pretty big change in your life, right? I was looking forward to being a dad, had all those images in my head of what that would look like. And uh, then what we got, and by the way, anybody who might be watching or listening to this who's pregnant or knows someone is, don't freak out. Because what <laughs> happened to us was very, very rare. But our kid was born with a really screwed up heart. And he was born nearly dead. And it's 29 years later now, but the kids had two pacemakers. So it's been quite a journey. Wow. And so this obviously, like when something comes out of left field like this, you don't really have the option but to change, right? But most of us, um, and I see in, in some of the things you talk about, you certainly talk about how comfortable we become and then how change averse we become. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's complacent. The two C's, complacency and comfort, are the two things that will absolutely kill you. And the problem is, as human beings, John, we like to get comfortable. So wherever mm -hmm. you are today, you're sitting where you're sitting because it feels kind of comfortable. I'm doing the same sort of thing, which is great. But when we do that in business uh, in particular, and we get comfortable with the way we've been doing things, and then technology changes and our customer needs changes, change and the world around is changing, and we're just staying in a nice little comfort zone, we are in trouble. <laughs> so why this always fascinates me, Gary. Why is it that in our lives, right, change is almost constant? Like you said, I mean, you had this life-changing experience when you were... Yeah. Uh, and, and we have these all the time, even if they're not as dramatic, right? Things are changing sure. constantly in our lives. But yet when, sure. we, when we get into a work context, we want to keep everything the same. Because when things are the same, John, we can predict them. And if we can predict them, we feel safe. So it, I use the example, if, if you and I go out after this interview and we get in our car, we start driving. I like to be able to predict that when the light turns red, the people coming in the other direction are going to stop. Mm -hmm. And I like to predict that they're going to follow all of the traffic laws. And that's all of life is like that. When you can predict what's going to happen, you can feel safe. And when we can't predict what's going to happen, which is what happens when change happens, we begin to get afraid. And when we get afraid, we begin to go into our shell if we don't manage ourselves correctly. So what's, what's an antidote to that? How can, when, when these changes start to come upon you, how can you embrace them as opposed to run from them? You have to listen to your thinking. I just got done writing an article not so long ago. One of the things you have to watch out for is catastrophic thinking. Oh my gosh, our company just got bought. And that means I'm going to lose my job. And when I lose my job, I won't be able to pay my bills. And if I can't pay my bills, we're going to get thrown out of the house. And me and the kids and the wife, are gonna, we're all going to be on the street. And it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> that, is, that is likely to happen. But let's look at the word, realistic worst case scenario. Okay, realistic worst case scenario. If I lose my job, what I would do? Well, I guess I'd go find another one. Mm -hmm. So you have to learn how to manage yourself, manage how you think, manage how you feel, particularly if you want to lead other people. So we have a tendency, I guess, is what you're saying. We have a tendency from when something comes up is we go to Z immediately, right? We just go full bore. Oh, my goodness, this is this could happen instead of taking a step back and maybe minimizing or, or being more realistic about what the worst case is. Exactly. It's being realistic. It's like and it's like, hey, wait a minute, time out. What's going on right here, right now? And 99.9% and .9 of the time, what's going on right here, right now, is not going to be nearly as bad as the scenario that you're beginning to paint in your head. So it really is a process of learning to manage yourself through it. So how do you start to, how does somebody start to approach that process of being able to, as you say, manage manage the, the reactions and the thoughts that's in their brains? How do you start that process? Because it seems to me a lot of people never, never master that. It requires, my wife said, we're both, we both coach executives, both psychologists, mm -hmm. and she has a nice phrase. She says, you have to see the choice to make the choice. Right. You have to see that you're beginning to let your mind take over. You have to see that your fears are beginning to drive you. And one of the ways to do that, 
John, is to pay attention to your body. Am I eating more than I normally do? Or I'm not eating at all. Am I drinking too much? Am I having trouble sleeping? And if so, let me, well, wait a minute, what's going on inside of me? And then you'll begin to discover that my mind is taken over rather than me controlling my mind. And that's where it all starts is with the mind. Yeah, and I love that what you just said, because it's something actually my wife and I always dis discuss a lot is when you see certain reactions in people or whatever that you always say, step back for a moment and say, okay, what's what's really going on? And I think, as you said, I think we have cues if we want to look for them. We have cues. We want to look for them. Getting angry is a really good one because what we do is, as human beings, John, if we don't have information, we tend to fill in the blanks. Mm -hmm. So let's say you, I work for you and I'm walking down the hall and you come walking by and I look up to smile at you and you just keep your eyes down and you go right on. And I'm mm -hmm. going, oh, my God, what did I do to upset John today? I like, <laughs> He's not a very friendly person. I start making up all this stuff. Yeah. And you just got a call from your wife that the kid is in the hospital and you're just like on your way. Now, I've made up this whole thing in my head. I've made up a story that has nowhere near the, the truth. And it's usually not a happy ending. And so those are the kinds of things we have to watch out on ourselves. And, uh, and, and, and I find that fascinating because I think that is multiplied a billion percent now by social media and stuff because we do we see snapshots in time of people's lives and then fill in all the gaps around it so so i see a, i see you post a picture and i think oh my goodness gary's life is awesome and mine is terrible compared <laughs> no, that's, that's exactly right it's uh, yeah social media is such such a blessing and a curse i mean the blessing is the way we can communicate the curse is uh, we, we we all kind of you know this is nothing this isn't really bad but we all mm. want to project our best selves and on social media we will create the narrative oftentimes of what we wish was true mm -hmm. but then when you get underneath you know the hood if you will you discover things aren't nearly as as happy go lucky as they oftentimes appear and if you got problems everybody has problems it's okay mm -hmm. So how so? Um, what are some other things that really hold people back from embracing change? And because, like I said, I mean, change is a constant in your life, and it just seems in work where we suddenly think we can control it. It's it's uh, part of it. It goes back to the the fear and not being willing to take risk. Very rarely are you going to be able to adapt to a change mm -hmm. or make a change happen. Those are two different ways of looking at a change without taking some level of risk. Right. And so if you, you know, I, I'm always reminded by Gail Sheehy, she wrote a, she did some research many, many years ago and she asked people, John, at the end of their life, she says, you know, I'm going to say end of their life, people 90, 95 years old, hey, looking back, would you say your life has been worthwhile? And what always stuck with me was one guy said, I can't answer your question. She said, why not? He said, because I never feel like I lived my life. She goes, what do you mean? He goes, I never took any risk. He goes, I always did exactly what I was supposed to do. And now at the end of my life, you ask me, if I've lived my life, I don't even feel like I lived it. And her research, as I recall, I might be calling it wrong, but as I recall, her research showed the people who reported they had taken some risk along the way, whether the risk turned out mm -hmm. the way they did or not, said, yeah, my life's been worthwhile. So you've <laughs> got to you've got to be willing to get through that fear barrier and take reasonable risk. Don't go mm -hmm. jumping off the bridge if you can't swim. All right, all right. So, uh, good, so good. So stay right where you are. Yeah, so ca calculated calculated risks, but uh, but I yep. uh, uh, but I get your point because yeah, I think that if you look back, you know when I mean even though I look back on on my career, I think okay, there are things that I did. You know, I I took a few risks. Some of them looked like they were a disaster, but in fact, they led to something better in the end. Exactly, exactly, and and a big part of it is is just kind of how you think. It's going back to that thinking process. You know, one of my beliefs is that every change creates opportunities, mm -hmm. but you're going to have to work to find them. You can't just sit there and go, okay, well, change creates opportunities. I think I'll just wait for it to fall into my lap. No, I'm going to have to work for it. I might have to take a little bit of risk. I got to calculate that out. But if I think about the, if I think about it that way and I'm willing to overcome my fear, then I'm going to find those opportunities that change always creates. And and that's another that's another fascinating point that you hit on here because I think we we exist in this shortcut culture today in this instant culture where people feel like I mean feel like they almost can sit back and wait for things to to come to them. How do you get people out of that mindset and to the fact that it, there are no shortcuts really? Everything comes with choice, hard work, and consequences. What I try to do is hold up a mirror for people, John, and I like mm -hmm. to ask this question. I say, where do you where do you see yourself in three to five years from now? Where would you like to be? Oh, I'd like to be here, 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 mm -hmm. here. 
And I said, okay, well, let me hold up a mirror and let's take a look at the direction that you're headed. Now, let's say <laughs> you say you want to be over there, but it looks like you're headed over there. What's the likelihood that's going to work? So you have to help people see what they're doing. You have to help them see the choices that they're making and see if those tie into the long-term goals they have for themselves. And if they don't, now they're a little bit more motivated to change. They're going to do it for them. They're not going to do it for you. Right. So so do you think that a lot of people actually don't realize, I mean, they have a goal maybe, but they don't realize that they're actually headed in a completely different direction? Is this a part of self-awareness? Well, exactly right. We don't. We don't take enough time to just sit back and think. I, I have a client. He's a senior executive, and I love what I learn from him. I learn all this stuff from my clients, by the way, or my kids. I, you know, I learn this stuff. And he says, Gary, I start off my day. I try to every day just take 30 minutes to think. I think about who are the people that I want to reach out to that I haven't talked to in a while. I think about my long-term goals. Are those still the right goals? Am I doing the things I need to do to reach those goals? We're running around. We're checking our phones. We're on social media. Hey, you know, I got to go get a burger. If you never stop and just think and reflect, the next thing you know, your life has passed you by and you haven't ended up where you want to be. And you wonder what happened. <laughs> and and again, a, a, f a fantastic point, because I do think it's and I don't know whether this is a new phenomenon or not. Um, and maybe you from your clinical psychology um, can tell me. But I think people don't. A lot of people are afraid to spend time in their own heads. <laughs> it, that varies <clears throat> excuse me that varies by person but um and then you have to ask yourself if i'm afraid to spend time in my own head um maybe i got some work to do <laughs> <laughs> yeah. because i can't i can't it, it's still going to be up there whether i ignore it or not so maybe i and go get some help if you need mm -hmm. some help if you need some professional help or go talk to some friends if we because sometimes if you just get in your own head it rattles around and you sure. get lost up there go you and i are talking it helps sometimes to talk it out mm -hmm. with uh, someone that you just met or a trusted advisor even better is is when when you work with people is self awareness one of the hardest things to to get people to you know embrace because i've always found in my career that's the one thing that's really tough when people don't have any level of self awareness that you it's really hard to to help them to change it, it, without self awareness you're done you mm -hmm. you you can't make a change so for example right now we're doing this video interview Mm -hmm. And you're going, why? Gary's got that thing sitting there, a piece of lint on his shirt, and it looks <laughs> awful. Why isn't he knocking that off? Well, I don't know what's there. Of course, there isn't. I'm just using it as an example. <laughs> but if I don't know what's there, I can't do anything about it. Now, if you go, hey, Gary, by the way, you got a big old piece of lint on your shoulder. Now I can make a choice. I can either choose to ignore it. I can choose to take it off and say, hey, John, what's mm -hmm. it to you? But if I don't have any awareness, I'm stuck right where I am, and I can't make any changes. So how so so how do you help people to to realize that and and get to that stage where they can be a little bit more kind of maybe introspective or or look at themselves and as you say like hold up the mirror and actually see what's going on? It, you have to get them focused on themselves first. They're not going to do it because I think it's a good idea. Mm -hmm. They're not. Hey, listen, y'all, listen. They, they could care less. But again, I go back to that point of if let's say you're a salesperson out there and you got a young kid working for you and you want to try to help them progress in their career, rather than just going out to them and saying, well, you ought to do this and this and this and this, because that's what I did. Mm -hmm. You start off with, tell me how things are going. Tell me where you want to go. Tell me what's, what do you think is working and not working. But if you get a kid who goes, well, you know, I'm pretty happy with my career, but I'm thinking I might want to go into CRM, but I'm not quite sure how to get there. Okay, now we got something to work with. And then I might say, okay, well, tell me more about that. Ask questions, listen to the answers, and then just hold up that mirror and say, okay, I think I hear you saying this. And maybe what would happen if you tried that? Now they're going to pay attention. But that mm -hmm. has to be tied into their goals, not your ideas. And and is it um, in, in the work you do, do you think that the pace of change is, is just like gone into overdrive or has it always been like this? But because there's certainly a sense that the, the pace of business change and everything is just hyperdrive right now. Relatively speaking, it's always been like this. I mean, just about every generation feels like, oh, my mm -hmm. goodness, particularly in the last hundred or so uh, you know, years, you know, with it with a combustible engine and all that kind of stuff, when those things began to come around, you, you stop and think about it. We didn't have electricity, you know, 125 years right. ago. I mean, it's 130 years ago. And, and it's, but in the last hundred years, but I can almost guarantee you the people who lived back then, you know, would say when the printing press was invented, oh my gosh, this is, um, you know, it was an unbelievable change. Mm -hmm. And the, that pace, I think everybody's experienced it as that. And now things are accelerating faster and faster and faster, and it's not gonna stop.
So how do you how do you deal with that? Um, and you know, because we're talking about change, but if you if you change direction every moment and every time something new happens, I mean, you could be you know you get dizzy. So how how do you help people select the right changes to make? Your foundation is your values, John. Mm -hmm. Your values never change. You know, the things that matter most to you in this life for me, that's my family, that's my faith. Um, it's my who I am as a human being and trying to help other people that doesn't change So I try to stay rooted in those things that do not change and that mm -hmm. way Even though all the stuff out there might be changing I can view it more as an opportunity and more as fun because there's fundamental parts of me that never change And that gives me the grounding that I need to deal with everything else Yeah, and I think that's a great message because I, I think that in the world we live in today, whatever those values are for you i think we need those anchors or those things that you know keep us steady in in the midst of all this mayhem right that's exactly right everything else is just stuff to do until we die <laughs> 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 that's i mean there's all these different kinds of things you know i'm a psychologist and a speaker and a writer and you're doing what you're doing and the people listen to it. we gotta do something so we sure. do it but along with that Part of, I guess part of my values is that I try not to take myself too serious. Mm -hmm. Life is serious enough without me piling on. So I, I rely on my fundamental values. And when I got to make tough choices, when I've got and change has created some really tough choices, mm -hmm. I use values like a compass. I pull my values out and I look at them. And here's the thing about values, though, John. We're talking, going full circle now about mm -hmm. being comfortable and all that stuff. Values are going to point you in the right direction, not necessarily the easiest direction. Right. So they're a bit of a test. You say, you know, my values are saying I go over there, but man, it's more comfortable over here. So values will be tough sometimes, but that's how you make those decisions. Yeah, no, I, I love that because, I mean, I always say that if you do the right thing, it will, it will always be the best thing to do. Probably never the easiest thing to do. And the right. outcome may take a lot longer than if you do the not so right thing. That's exactly right. That is, <laughs> and I, I pretty much have lived that philosophy as well. Uh, it's, it's interesting as a coach, when I coach an executives, they come to me with all these complicated things. And Gary, what should I do? And I'm usually like, well, let's start with telling the truth. <laughs> what? what, what? You know? <laughs> but that's, and if you do, it tends to be a lot less complicated. But those are, those are my values. Other people mm -hmm. have other values. And but yeah. whatever your values are, they will point you in the right direction. Yeah, so that's a great way to end is just to, um, to to tell the viewers today, maybe go revisit, see what your values are, whatever they are, maybe focus in on them and see, as you said, you know, where are they pointing you and are you actually headed in the same direction as your values are telling you to go? One of the most powerful exercises I do in my talks, John, I call it the two minute drill. I tell people, imagine that you got some child in this world whom you love with all your heart and soul and something's happened to you, not to them. I'm going to give you two minutes. Mm -hmm to write them a letter, and you got to pretend this is the last time you can ever communicate with them and let them know everything they need to know about life and what matters most. And I say go, and they write for two minutes, and they come out of it, some of them crying, some of them feeling, because they very quickly get in touch with what matters most. Uh, wow, that's a, that's a fantastic piece of advice, and I hope everybody takes that. In fact, I think I'll do my, that myself later just to... Um, as well. So, um, Gary Brad in North Carolina, thank you very much for joining us today. Before you go, how can people find out more about what you do? Um, I'm represented by PlatinumSpeakersAgency.com. Uh, Donna's my manager, so Platinum Speakers Agency, or my website is GaryBrat.com. Excellent. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline, or CRM. See you all for another expert interview very soon. Thank you.